So today I'd like to work uh, on Taylor series and McLaurin series. Um, so most of these questions, they sort of follow a very dependable pattern um, and they utilize uh, sort of a central uh, formula. Um, the idea here is that this, uh, this here um, represents the nth derivative of a particular function. So, you know, here we're actually given a function uh, and he, this n is the nth derivative. So you know how we can take the first, second, the third, and the fourth derivatives of something. Uh, that would represent that n, uh, that value of n. So if I said the third derivative, I'd be referring to an n value of, th uh, of three. Um, so this is sort of the nth, uh, nth derivative. Uh, here, this a value is, um, you know, this what the series is essentially centered around. Um, as you can see, that's implied in the question. Uh, we have an example here, find the Taylor series for the function f of x equals ln of x centered around a equals one. Well, that a would be one. And again, I mean, so we have another a here. It's the same a, so that a would also be one. Uh, and then we leave the X as is. Uh, uh, and so essentially what's going to happen here is that we're going to distill this down to a point where, where we would actually do a power series on this. So after we simplify all this and plug the necessary values, we're going to, we're going to arrive at a point where we have, uh, where we would essentially be doing a power series. So most of these questions, it'll say, find the Taylor series. Uh, for a particular function centered around a value uh, a, uh, and then um, you know you would probably have to use a power series uh, 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 eventually, and that's really the goal. Uh, sometimes you'll see these questions where it'll say everything we're saying now, but in addition to that, it'll tack on um, you know find the radius of convergence, right? So once you get it into that power series format, then you would have to apply all the rules for solving a power series to find the radius of convergence um, uh, or the lack thereof. Uh, and then you would, that, that would essentially conclude the problem. So in this, in this particular video, we're just concerned about distilling it down to where we would eventually use the power series stuff. <clears throat> and then I'll leave the power series up to you since I actually, I do have a video on that. Um, but at any rate, uh, what I usually start off by doing, and I'll, I'll maybe put this off to the side, is uh, I find, um, you know, uh, you know, the fourth, uh, you know, maybe I'll find, um, four consecutive derivatives, or, you know, maybe, maybe sometimes even five, so maybe four to five consecutive derivatives. So uh, my function here is f of x equals, uh, you know, ln of x, right? And then so here, uh, my first derivative would just be one over x. Um, and then my second derivative, so this is, this is my second derivative here. Um, I would essentially be doing the derivative d over dx of one over x, uh, which is the same thing as doing the derivative of x to the negative first, remember there's a one here. And then when you take it to the top, the exponent becomes negative. Um, and why this is easy, why, why did I put this in, that, in this format? Well, because I can use the power rule now. And remember what the power rule says, it says you can bring it down like this and then subtract one from the top. So negative one minus one is just negative two. Uh, and this equals what, right? It's just negative one over x squared. Then I find, uh, let's say the third derivative, um, and then you know I'll have three of those, uh, you know apostrophes, I suppose. Um, and so th th and this time around, we're finding the derivative of what we ended with here, um, which is negative one over x squared. Uh, and this is of course uh, like before. Um, to just make this easier on us, uh, we can just do negative x to the negative two, right? That's what we're taking the derivative of. I'm bringing that two to the top so that it can, so that I can use the power rule. So if I bring this negative two to the bottom here, it'll, it'll hit with this negative and it'll become a positive two, right? So it'll be positive two x. And then this, and then I'm gonna have to subtract one from the top. So it'll be negative two minus one, uh, which is actually negative three. 
uh, which is just two over X to the third, right? <clears throat> Uh, I, I'm going to take a fourth here, but I mean, you know, it, as you do this, uh, it gets very difficult to write out uh, the comma, the, the apostrophes or what have you. And so we just denote it by the fourth. Uh, and that's why we have that N up there, right? Well, um, we're just denoting how many derivatives we're taking. Um, and if I, so the fourth derivative, so I'm going to pick up a pick up from where I left off. So, you know, I'm taking the, uh, I'm taking the derivative of, um, d over dx of this guy, 2 over x cubed, which, uh, again, I mean, I can write this as, you know, being the derivative, d over dx, uh, of 2x to the negative third. <clears throat> uh, and I'll pull the constant out, and then, you know, or maybe I'll bring this down, and it'll hit with the 2. I'll get negative x, uh, negative 6x, and then I'm going to the, the top, I'll subtract one from the top, so it'll be negative three minus one, which is negative four, right? Um, which then comes down to being negative six x to, x to the fourth, okay? So <clears throat> these are about four derivatives. You're always safe to take about four uh, of these guys. Um, sometimes you'll need five, um, but that's sort of the first step is to just find four to five uh, consecutive uh, derivatives. Um, the second step is really uh, where things get into play. Um, we essentially evaluate the function and the derivative at the a value. So we evaluate uh, the function, right? Evaluate the function and the derivative. At the x the, uh, the a value at the a value. So what do I mean by that? Well, uh, what, I, what I mean here is, um, so the a value that was given to us in the question is a equals one. Um, so remember uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to evaluate the function. So at that a value, because that's what it says. It says evaluate the function uh, at that a value. So let's go ahead. Uh, and do that. So uh, f of, uh, so I'm going to plug in that a value of one, and I'll put this at the top so that it's clear. The a value is in fact equal to one. Um, so f equals, so it will be one. So I'm plugging this into the function, which is ln of x, that's ln of one. Um, that's actually zero. Uh, and now I'm going to plug it into the derivative. So I'm going to plug one into the derivative now. Uh, and when I do that, I have one over one, uh, which is just one, because that's this is the derivative, right? And so I'm picking off these uh, these values. I'm plugging in one. Now I'm going to plug in the second derivative, right? The second derivative uh, into this particular, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to plug in one into the second derivative. What is the second derivative? It's it's negative one over x squared, right? So I'll have negative one over one squared, which is negative one. Okay. Uh, and then let's let's do this for the third as well. Uh, when I do this to the third, um, I'm plugging it into two over x cubed, which is two over one cubed, right? Which is just two. Uh, and if I do this for the fourth, and again, I'm gonna denote this as four, I just don't wanna keep writing them out. Um, I'll have a one here and I'll have negative six, negative six, over uh, one to the fourth, which is just negative six, right? Um, so these are, so I've, I've completed the, uh, you know, the second step here, right? Um, and the idea now, and let me go ahead and segment this out. Uh, the idea now is to, um, <clears throat> so essentially what we're gonna do at this stage is we're going to evoke a formula uh, and this formula is as follows. So the three um, follow formula. And the formula is as follows. Um, so we're going to have uh, f of a plus um, f prime of a, okay, uh, x minus a. Uh, let's see, plus 
Uh, let me go ahead and just get the formula down here. So this is essentially the formula and it's kind of tedious as you can see. Um, the pattern is that uh, we essentially take F of A. Um, so we would take this value, put it here, and then we would take the derivative. Uh, so, the, so A plugged into the derivative, right? This one, uh, we would put it here. Uh, and then we would do x minus the a value, which is x minus 1, uh, and we'd raise it to the power of 1. Um, and then the second one is taking the second derivative, plugging in, um, you know, so the second derivative, when we plugged in a, we got negative 1, so we put that value here. Um, and then uh, x minus, again, what is our a value? It's 1, so we put in the 1 here, raised to the second power this time. So the powers, I mean, they, you know, they increment, right? One, two, three, four. Um, so that's not the hard part. It's just looking at, okay, I want F prime prime of A. What, what is F prime prime of A? What, what did I get when I plugged in A into F prime prime? I got negative one. So I put the negative one here. Um, and, then, and then I just do X minus, what was my A value? Well, it was one, right? So I put the one here, I square it. So it's sort of following this uh, formula um, sort of rel uh, religiously here. Um, so let's, let's go ahead and try and do that. So uh, f of uh, f of a is is what right? It's just plugging in that a value into the function uh, f, which is zero. So we just have zero here. Um, plus, uh, so this would actually be um, the plugging in a into the first derivative, which we did here, right? A is one, and we plugged it into the first derivative. It's just one, uh, so we'll have a one there. Uh, and then x minus what was our a value? It was one, right? to the first. So that's what we have for that one. Um, and uh, we'll continue on here. So that we have the second derivative of plugging in a into it, right? Uh, which is this guy here, it's just negative one. Uh, so let's actually write that like that, negative one. Uh, over, it says two factorial, all right. Uh, and then x minus, well, what was the a value? It was, it was one, right? And then we square it, because that's what the formula. To sort of tells us to do. Um, and uh, so we have a plus uh, here uh, where we have f prime prime of a. Uh, so we're plugging in a into the third derivative and then we get two. So uh, I'll follow uh, that and then I'll put three factorial uh, and then x minus what was the a value it was one, right? Uh, to the third is what the formula uh, tells me. Um, uh, let's grab the fourth. Uh, let's grab the fourth. So what would the fourth be, right? I mean, if we were, so the pattern is uh, you do the fourth uh, derivative and then the a value plugged in at that. And then it's x minus a. We always have x minus a, but this time to the fourth uh, over four factorial. <clears throat> so, uh, you know, we have the, we have a when we plug, like we have the value for, um, you know, plugging in a into the fourth derivative, it's negative six, right? So We'll write that as negative six here uh, over four factorial. That's what uh, the formula says. And then x minus that a value that we have, which is one uh, to the fourth, right? And so we're left with this. Uh, let's try and simplify a bit. Um, so what you'll notice is that the zero is irrespective. So we just have x minus one here, uh, as it turns out. Uh, and then this negative is going to clash with this positive. So we'll write negative here. Uh, and so what we'll have is uh, x minus one uh, squared over two factorial, um, and then uh, plus, uh, so this is what we have. We have two over three, uh, we'll maybe bring this to the top here, uh, two, um, or we'll leave it as is perhaps, <clears throat> or, you know, yeah, we'll leave it as is. x minus one cubed, right? Uh, plus, uh, or actually negative, right, that negative, tends to clash with that positive. So we'll say negative um, six over four factorial um, x minus one to the fourth. Uh, and uh, that that's sort of, uh, I think maybe good enough for our purposes. Let's see if we can um, <clears throat> maybe uh, simplify a little bit. Um, let me just make sure that this is the case. So uh, we followed the formula, right? And uh, after we followed the formula, uh, the goal is to maybe uh, simplify the series. 
right? Uh, and by simplify, I mean, you know, take into account the negatives and stuff, uh, and then maybe try to get the factorials out of there if possible. Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, um, so I have, let's say here, x minus one um, minus, so I have one over two factorial. So one over two factorial, that's just one over two times one, right? Uh, and these cancel just one over two, right? Uh, so I can just say that's just um, x minus one squared over two. <clears throat> what about uh, two over three factorial? So uh, two over three factorial is equal to two over uh, three times two times one. Uh, and then these twos can cancel. I'll have one over three. Uh, so I'll just uh, say that's one over three. Uh, x minus three, right? Or maybe I can bring it to the top if I were so inclined. I'll say x minus one cubed to the third. <clears throat> minus, uh, so I have six over four factorial. Um, so that would be six over four times three times two times one. And three times two is six. Uh, so this six will cancel out with this six. I'll be left with uh, a four factorial, and then I'll have um, x minus one on the top like that. Um, and once, I mean, so once you reach this stage, um, once you reach this stage, the fifth step is to construct a series formula construct a series formula from this series that we have here. Uh, one thing that we know is that it's going from positive to negative to positive to negative. So it's definitely an alternating series. Uh, so let's go ahead and say, these always start from zero, by the way. Um, so it's an alternating series. So we'll have the negative one to the n. Uh, and then what do we notice in the bottom? Well, it seems like in the bottom, it goes from two to three to four. So maybe n, uh, or actually, you know, we, we don't need the factorial since we canceled them out in these steps, right? Uh, so, but it seems like it's just n, right? Because on the first, uh, n is two and then three and then four, um, or, you know, in this case, it's just one, right? Um, but the thing is we start from zero. So the, the first element uh, would actually be a zero in the bottom. So we want to take in, to consideration that that's the case, and we'll do n plus one instead. Uh, the x minus one is the same uh, throughout all of them. And it seems like for each one, we go from one to two to three to four. Um, so maybe we'll have to the n here, but remember we're, uh, our index is actually starting from zero. So we would have to take in that to account and add plus one to it, right? So that we sort of accommodate the fact that uh, the series is starting from an n amount of zero. So, uh, you know, we want the first element to be one, right? Um, but the problem is that, uh, you know, we're starting from zero, so why not just uh, add one and then it'll take, an, it'll, it'll offset that contingency. And so this is your, this is the series, uh, this is, this is a power series. And this power series, you would probably want to use the ratio test. And, uh, you know, I have a video on power series. And the idea here is that, you know, use the ratio test, do the power series. Um, and uh, you would find, you know, the uh, what you would call the radius uh, of convergence. Um, if you get, you know, an interval, right? Um, or, you know, <clears throat> you could probably maybe just have you know, negative infinity to infinity if all values uh, qualify as the radius of convergence. But nevertheless, let's move on to the next example. So for this question, we're uh, sort of, you know, doing more or less the same thing, uh, but with e to the x this time, right? So um, the idea here is, again, I mean, this sort of goes back to uh, those steps uh, that we were talking about uh, earlier, and actually, for the sake of just referring to these steps, I'll go ahead and uh, copy them so that we can have them down here. 
right? Uh, so we find four or five uh, derivatives, right? So the in this case, uh, you know, we have an f of x. Uh, we have a uh, an f of x uh, equal to um, <clears throat> to e to the x, and then the first derivative of that is just e to the x, and the second derivative of that is just e to the x. <clears throat> the third derivative of that is also e to the x, and the fourth is also e to the x. So um, we have some consistency there. Um, and then what do we do when we find the, uh, you know, uh, the four or five derivatives? We evaluate the function and the derivative at that value. Um, so this is what we have here for, you know, the derivatives. And we evaluate the function at that value of a. So f of x equals e to the x, right? Uh, and then if I plug in zero into that, just one. Um, so, uh, or actually, we, you know, we're not supposed to plug in zero. We're supposed to plug in the a value of three, right? Uh, so if, if a was zero, then we plug in zero, but this time a is three. So it's actually, uh, if we plug in three into that, it's just e to the third, right? Now, if we do, if we plug in three into the, uh, you know, the, the first derivative, right? Um, uh, again, it's just plugging in, you know, the, the first derivative is e to the x, so we plug in three for the x, we just still have e to the third. Uh, and if we do that here as well for the second derivative, second derivative, um, if we plug in three into that, it's it's e to the third, right? Um, so e, it's e to the x here, so it's actually e to the third, right? Uh, which is still e to the third. Then we can do that for the fourth as well. Uh, where where we will plug in three, we're always plugging plugging in the a value, um, and it's it's still e to the e to the third, which is still e to the third, right? Um, so <clears throat> that concludes that portion, uh, and uh, then it says to construct a series. Actually, I think I clipped a couple steps here. Um, yeah, we weren't. Uh, I think I clipped maybe the bottom uh, few, um, maybe these these two. So uh, at any rate, now we follow the formula, right? Uh, what was the uh, formula here? Well, uh, we do f of a um, plus f prime of a, and then x minus a to the first power um, plus f prime prime uh, of a, um, then x minus a to the second power uh, over two factorial, um, and then plus, this is the third one, right? So everything is sort of the same, except, you know, our power and our factorial are a little different. Um, and so here, uh, what we do is so like this sort of just this pattern just keeps going on and we'll add more terms if we need um but uh f of a we already said it when we plug in that a value of of uh, three um when we plug in that a value of three into the original function uh we actually get e to the third right so this is just going to be e to the third plus when we plug in an a or uh, a three really into the first derivative, we get e to the third. And then x minus, what was our a value? It was three, right? To the first power, that's what the formula tells us. And then when we plug in the a value of three into the second derivative, we get e to the third. So it's x minus, what was the value? It was to the third, right? Or it was, so this one's to the second, that's what the formula tells us, and it wants us to plug in that a value, which is three over two factorial. Okay, um, and then moving on, what's the third derivative? So plugging in the first, second. So realistically, this should be plugging it into the third, right? 
And if we plug it into the third, again, it's just e to the third, right? So uh, it's just e to the third times x minus a, which is three, to the third over three factorial. And this just continues on and on. And we can we can grab a fourth just so this this uh, this pattern is apparent, right? We would get e to the three because plugging three into the fourth derivative is just e to the three x minus that a value is always three. In this case, it would be four. You know, we're we're moving on here, and four factorial. So the pattern is that um, let's try to build a series out of this. It's not alternating, so I'm not going to put that alternating sign there. And the idea here is that it is, um, we have two fact, so um, we can just do, um, let's see here. So what you notice is that uh, we have this x minus three always. And e so it, even if like I start from zero, that matches because my first would be x minus zero or x minus three to the zero, which is just one. So we would just be left with e to the third, right? Mm -hmm. um, and let's see. So in the bottom, you would just have n factorial, right? And that seems like a good bet because for zero, you know, on your first element, you'd have zero factorial, right? Uh, and then you'd have uh, one factorial, which is just one, uh, and then you'd have two. So this this checks out, right? I mean, uh, we don't have to add a plus one here because actually putting in the zero actually gets us uh, what we have above. And then you know this would just be uh, a power series that you would that you would have to do. Um, and you know the the powers on the top, um, that too can just be n. Because uh, if it's zero, then you know we get this guy, uh, just the first element here. If it's one, then we get this guy. If it's two, then we get this guy. So there's no reason to offset anything in this type of question. And so here again, it was just a power series. We do the ratio test, um, and then we would uh, find you know, what the radius of uh, convergence is. So uh, here we have a question that says, it's a little different. It says, find the McLaren series for f of x equals sine of x. Now, before, uh, you know, these question prompts said, find the Taylor series. Um, but now here we introduce something called the McLaren series. And the only meaningful distinction here is that the McLaren series uh, is uh, a Taylor series except the a value is equal to zero. So it's centered at zero. So here, back here, we had a equal to three. Uh, back here in the previous problem, we had a equal to one. Uh, in this case, uh, it's just a equal to zero. So they won't, maybe they won't say it explicitly, you know, the, the a is equal to zero, uh, but that should be inferred because it's a McLaren series, right? So by the definition, the a is equal to zero. Um, so nearly always we, uh, you know, we find, you know, maybe four to five uh, consecutive derivatives. They all also call this uh, higher order, uh, higher order derivatives, um, which is just taking the derivative again and again. Uh, so of the function. So, uh, you know, we have f of x equals uh, sine of x. And we have, so what would f prime be, right? Well, uh, sort of a fact here is that the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And then if you take the second derivative, you're actually taking the derivative, uh, you're taking the derivative of cosine of x, right? Uh, which is negative sine of x. So these are straightforward facts, but this is where it tends to get tricky, right? Because we know that, you know, the derivative of sine of x is cosine, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Um, 
but you know what's the derivative of negative sine right so what's the you know what's the derivative of negative sine of x what about that right um the idea here is you know you can pull the constant out a negative and then just take the derivative of sine which is just cosine and then attach that uh, negative back um and that's that's what the third derivative and then the fourth derivative will denote that by a four um is just the derivative of negative cosine. So we're taking the derivative d over dx of negative cosine of x, right? <clears throat> so what does so what do we have now? So we take that negative out, take the derivative of cosine, that's just negative sine. This negative clashes with the negative we would have in the sine, it becomes positive sine of x. Uh, and then you know the next one that we take, uh, what would it be? Well, we're we're sort of looping back now. Uh, right, uh, because you know we take the derivative of sine, we'd get cosine. So you know this one would be cosine. Uh, the sixth uh, would be uh, the sixth would be well, what? Let's see. So you know we took the derivative of sine, and then the sixth would be negative sine, right? And then so on and so forth. So these are sort of good to have with these types of problems, because then what we do eventually is we plug in, you know, uh, the value of a into these uh, into these derivatives, and that a value is zero, right? So if I if I plug zero into sine, I get sine of zero, which is zero, and if I plug that into the first derivative, I'm talking about this one here. Uh, that's just cosine of zero, which is one. Uh, and now I'm talking about this one here. So the second derivative, uh, that would be negative sine of zero, which is zero. And then I'm talking about the third derivative now, um, which is just negative cosine of zero. Now, cosine of zero is negative one. Uh, sorry, is one. But then I have that negative here. So it becomes negative one. Um, and then, you know, f prime 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 f prime 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 which is you know four you know we're talking about this guy um uh so i would just plug in zero here i'd get uh you know um for i would plug in zero into sine right uh i'd get sine of zero which is zero so the pattern here is zero uh one zero negative one zero right uh, and then if I do this into the fifth, oh, let's see what we have for the fifth. Um, you know, plugging zero into that, this is what we're talking about. It's cosine of zero, which is just one, right? Uh, and then, you know, the sixth in this case is negative sine of zero, which is zero, right? So again, I mean, the, the, you can you can sort of go for however long you want, but when you have a few, uh, it's good to stop um, and you know, this is sort of where we evoke uh, that formula that we've been referring to uh, all along um, is that, uh, you know, uh, that format that we have where we have f prime of a uh, times x minus a to the, you know, to the first, right? And then plus uh, the second derivative uh, of a uh, and then x minus a to the second, right, over uh, over two factorial, what's the next guy going to be? Well, it'll be the third derivative uh, with the a x minus a to the to the third, right? Uh, over three factorial, and so that pattern uh, therefore follows. And so we okay, so we're looking at what you know the f of a. What's the f of a going to be? And the other thing to recognize here is that uh, <clears throat> before we move on. That these a's are zeros, right? So, you know, uh, this is going to be, you know, what's f of zero, right? And then what's f prime of zero? And then x minus zero is just x, so it's going to be x to the first. And then here we're looking for f prime of zero, and then x minus zero is just x squared over two factorial plus uh, f prime 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 of zero, then x to the third over three factorial, right? So, you know, you can sort of go back and plug in zeros so that it's easy for you to sort of uh, target what you want. So uh, here we're looking at f of zero. We have that. It's just zero, right? 
So we'll we'll just put zero uh, plus f prime of zero times x. So f prime of zero, which is just one, which is one times x to the first. So we'll just have uh, you know we'll just have x here because x to the first is just one. Um, and uh, let's so what are we looking now? So we covered this base. We covered this base, right? So these are these are covered, um, and now we're looking at okay. So we want the second derivative uh, of zero. So this is what we're looking at. We get zero, miraculously again. Uh, so if we have zero here in the top, the whole thing will be zero. So let's not even bother, right? Now we're looking at plugging in the third derivative and then evaluate it at zero, which is negative one. So what do we have here? Uh, you know, we have, we would have put negative one there, um, and then uh, times x cubed, right? So times x cubed over three factorial, right? Uh, let's keep. Let's try to get some more terms here, right? So uh, plus this one's going to be the fourth. We're still going to you know be plus the fourth at zero, and then x to the fourth over four factorial, right? So let's let's get what the fourth is, right? Um, so the fourth is if I if I take the fourth uh, and I plug it in here for this piece, what would that be? It would just be zero, right? Um, so maybe maybe we'll take the fifth to try to try and see what the pattern is. Um, x to the fifth over five factorial. So let's let's get the fifth in it here. We have it's one, right? So it's going to be, it's going to be, so this whole thing is one, right, times x to the fifth over five factorial. So uh, it's essentially just going to be uh, one times x to the fifth, which is just x to the fifth over five factorial, right? Um, so <clears throat> let's see what we have, right? We have x um, minus x cubed over three factorial plus x to the fifth over five factorial. So it's clear what's happening, right? I mean, uh, the next one's probably gonna be x to the seventh over seven factorial, right? So what's, I mean, cause we're just following a pattern here. So you're going from positive to negative to positive to negative. So in our series, uh, n equals zero to infinity, we start at zero. Um, uh, in our series, we're gonna have a uh, you know, a, a, a sort of a um, an alternating thing, right? Because uh, this is alternating, and uh, in the bottom, let's see. So you're incrementing by two, so two n. If you were incrementing by three, you'd say three n, but you're incrementing by two. And in the top, you have the x that's always there, but you're incrementing the top by two as well, so two n here as well. So let's try to see if the first element that we put into this matches this. Um, if I put n equals zero, I'll have x to the zero, which is one, right, over two times zero. So th this really doesn't work. Um, so we want, uh, we, we could probably mess around with this a bit and add a plus one. So what happens is if I plug in a zero, I have two to x to the two times zero, which is zero, but then plus one. So I end up having a one here. Um, and then <clears throat> over two times zero, which is zero, plus one, which is one. So I get my X, right? And then the second time I do this, I, uh, you know, my N is equal to one. So it's X to the two times one, right? Plus one, which is three. So I have that over two times one plus one, which is three factorial, right? So we want that factorial in here as well. So our final is N equals zero to infinity, negative one to the N, okay? Uh, x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 factorial. And again, uh, you so this is your series. What you would do is you'd apply, you know, the ratio test on this. And once you do the ratio test, you know, you have your, uh, you would find the radius of convergence, right, uh, by using the power series. And I do have a power series video.